All right, guys, today, today we're gonna make a knife. Yeah! Now, the knife we're going to build is going to be a larger knife, maybe some type of a camp knife, uh, some sort of chopper. I haven't done a lot of big knives on this channel lately, or any knife for that matter. But anyways, there's a few design elements I'd like to incorporate into this knife. The first one being that we're going to put a convex grind on the blade, meaning that it's not gonna be a flat bevel, it's not gonna be a hollow grind, but rather convex. To get that convex grind, we're actually gonna start out grinding it as a flat grind. We're not gonna take it all the way. Once we get to a certain point, we're gonna switch over to the rotary platen and then we'll start putting our convex finish on it. And I'll explain the reason for that in just a moment. The second design element I'm going to incorporate in this blade is going to be a fuller. What a fuller is, if you don't know, it's that groove that kind of runs along the length of the blade on both sides. Uh, some people call it a blood groove. Uh, we're gonna call it a fuller because I don't I don't think YouTube likes blood groove I've made a modification to my belt grinder that will allow me to grind those in there quite easily I'm really excited to give it a try So we're gonna go ahead and do that now as far as the size of the knife I'm gonna constrain it to whatever I can draw on a piece of eight and a half by eleven or a legal size piece of paper So let's head over to the workbench and we'll start drawing out this knife All right, so let's just talk really quickly about why we're going to do a flat grind first and then switch over to the rotary platen and start our convex If we were looking down the end of a piece of stock And so basically this would be our center point our edge is gonna start right there if we just came right up to the rotary platen right away and started putting our convex grind on there, we're going to end up uh, with a really thick material. It's going to start getting fat right after the, the edge very quickly. And we don't really want that. We don't want to have a really large profile on this part. We still want it to be fairly thin. So what we're going to do, this will be our cutting edge. We're actually going to grind a flat grind in there first. And we're not going to take it all the way. Once we get that established, then we'll switch to our rotary platen, which is a slack belt grind. And uh, we'll start putting that on. And what we'll end up with is a much more gentle transition to the spine from the cutting edge. And it's gonna leave, it'll leave the blade thinner towards the cutting edge. It's still gonna have a lot of meat there just because of the nature of a convex grind, but it's gonna make for a lot less chunky knife and a lot better cutting action. So that's the reason we're gonna do that. I've tried just taking you know, a piece of stock and just ooh, rotary platen like this, and that's kind of what you end up with. Whereas if you'll take one, and if you kind of, this is our cutting edge, and if you put in your flat grinds first, you end up with a much more gradual build towards your spine. That's what we're going for. All right, let's draw this thing. going to be using a 3 16 thick tool steel, two inches wide. Okay, so we've got our profiling done, a rough profiling on this beast. Um, I've also gone ahead and removed the paper. Now, the reason that I actually, I glued the paper down and then over top of that, I sprayed it with layout dye. The reason for that is that sometimes when you're grinding and profiling, sometimes that adhesive warms up and it lets go of the paper and then next thing you know, you don't really have a template to grind to. So I always just spray it on there as a backup in case that paper starts letting go, I could, uh, I could remove it all together and I still have the silhouette left behind from where we sprayed over the paper. So the next step of the process is I'm going to put a layout dye all over this whole thing again and I'm actually going to take it to my grinder and just touch where the the grinding the small contact wheel is going to be uh, grinding the fuller in the reason I want to do that is because I just want to 
set it there and kind of figure out, boom, the center point. From there, what I'll do is I'll actually scribe out using my um, height gauge and my, my surface plate, and I'm gonna mark lines on equal sides above where the center point is. That way I'll have a visual reference that I can bring my fuller to and try and make very even floors on both sides. So we're gonna do that, and then I'll also lay out my bevel. Now, this knife is gonna be a little bit tricky because the bevel is actually going to grow. It's gonna, I wanna keep the bevel line here, even with this top, but since this blade tapers out at the end, uh, we're actually gonna have to grow the bevel. So the bevel will be starting out here and it's actually gonna get bigger in relation to the edge as it gets out. And that means that the angle of that bevel is gonna be a constant change. It's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I think if we just kinda slow down, take our time grinding, we should be able to get it nice and even. Now, one thing I'll tell you is that with the VFD on my belt grinder, Grinding is, uh, I slow it down, and it is so much easier to do really fine, really precise grinds. Before, my grinder was running about like 3,000, 3,400 surface feet per minute, and the ability to slow that down, I really, really like that feature. So, we'll go ahead and get this sucker laid out, and uh, the weight of this thing, like with this big belly, and obviously with this blade tapering thicker, uh, wider towards the tip, you really notice that once you get a swinging motion in place, oh man, the inertia just carries it. I wanna do some testing on this. Maybe, maybe once I get this knife done, we'll do like a testing video where I can set up some different chopping demonstrations. I mean, just when you swing it like that, man, it is pretty cool. So anyways, we'll go ahead and put some die out on both sides. We'll start laying out some lines, grinding. All right, so our layout die is dried and I've got my work rest set up. Now, when I originally bought this small wheel holder, these aluminum side frames, they actually came and they totally came past the bearing. So all I did is I just took my milling machine and I just cut them down so that this would actually stick proud of the frame. Yeah, you could even just throw them in the grinder, grind those off too if you've got a set like this, but that allows me to uh, get in here. Obviously, I wouldn't ever need a fuller as deep as this sticking out right there, but this way I can use this to do fullers. So, I'm gonna take a little machinist square. I've got an 80 grit ceramic belt, a brand new one on here. And I'm just gonna hold this to make sure it's nice and square. I'm just gonna use a belt to scratch a line. Doesn't need to be much. Oh, we've got a whole bunch of lines there. Uh, let's see if we can come up here and find an average. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So we've got a couple lines here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go to the bench We'll get the granite surface plate and we'll uh, figure out roughly where those are and then we're gonna scribe a line here and here and then that way we'll know where our fuller's gonna be. All right, it's just getting ready to uh, set up the old granite surface plate and my height gauge. My dog started barking. You never ignore a barking dog. There's a cow that's trying to trespass. Hello, cow. I better go call my neighbor. I think it's, I think it's my neighbor's cow. <laughs> All right, let's go catch a cow. Okay, I think the cow went this way. Where? Oh, there it is. There it is. All right, we got the cow into the field. It's gonna have to stay there for now. And uh, gotta get a hold of the neighbors and find out what we're supposed to do with the cow. Anyways, we'll get back to the shop and get doing some more work on this knife. Best part about that is that it wakes you up and just makes you feel, mm, I'm ready to get back on this knife. All right, we got the cow safely back in my neighbor's yard. I ran out there and helped them. And uh, now what we're gonna do is we'll kind of set this up here and take my height gauge. Let's kind of see roughly where that mark was. Figure out roughly what looks about average. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna zero this. And let's see how far down do we want to go. Let's go 150 thou. Clearly I'm just winging it as I build everything this way. So we got this. That looks pretty good to me. I'll do this side. Okay, and then we'll go up 150 thou. Perfect. 
Yeah, I think I think that'll be a nice size fuller. We're gonna try it out anyways. We're gonna give that a shot. We can always change it. Okay, one part I just remembered. Uh, I actually marked out the stop line, so I, I've got that transferred to both sides. So I'm gonna roughly grind to there. I think that's a good spot. Uh, it's not really gonna show up too well, but anyways, let's just kinda, I don't know, see what happens. So now we've got our fullers done. <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark in how high we would like our grind to come. Okay. fairly close on this one we're not entirely at those lines that we marked out there yet so you still have a bit to go here I need to bring this I need to bring this up this grind line this way a little bit but it's uh, it's coming and uh, we're fairly close to our scribe lines there obviously I'm a little bit low right there i um, gonna just touch those issues up but so far I'm pretty happy with that and then we're still leaving quite a bit of edge thickness there uh, I wouldn't say quite a bit probably uh, probably 40 or 50 thousandths of an inch so that we can come on here with the slack belt on the rotary platen and then also I'll probably scribe out another line uh, probably right in here right in the middle there so that I'll, I'll have a line when I'm doing the slack grind as well that way I can make sure that comes in nice and crisp so a little bit more work on this side and then we'll go ahead and grind this side hopefully line everything up and uh, need to address this plunge line here clean that up a touch but so far it's going pretty good and I think there's a huge difference with the glass platen. Really what I'm doing is I've got a steeper angle at this end and the blade's actually coming like this. Let me exaggerate. So I'm kind of grinding like this and I'm moving like this. Trying to keep it even because, you know, as we get wider here, we want to maintain our edge thickness. So we're using our lines that we marked out there. And obviously this goes like this. So this bevel grows and the angle constantly changes. But so far it's fairly even. I still got a little few artifacts to touch up right there, but this was a lot easier than I thought it would be. And uh, running the grinder slower definitely helps. And then I'm sure that glass platen, yeah, that glass platen is awesome. That's making a huge difference. I'm stoked.
started hand sanding this, I realized that these fullers need to be cleaned up a bit. So I put a 320 grit belt on and uh, I'm just gonna kind of come in here and clean these up a little. All right guys, we got our hand sanding done, took all the scratches out of it. We, we maybe got a little carried away. Um, I took this up to 400, but I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. I didn't need to go quite this crazy pre-heat treat. Uh, that fuller, I'm really, really digging that. Nice and clean and crisp. Um, but anyways, uh, the next steps we gotta do, I'm gonna be drilling the holes for the scales. I'm not sure what I'm using for scales yet. I have a bunch of stabilized wood on order. I hope it shows up in the mail tomorrow. Um, but if not, we'll figure something out. I might do some composite scales, like, like maybe inlays or something. Not sure about that. I'll also probably be adding a little thumb jimping in here, maybe a little decorative jimping here. Really liking the way this thing is feeling so far. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click this circle to do that. And when you subscribe, also hit that little bell button and then you get a notification every time a new video comes up. You can follow along with this knife build. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. Cheers.